you've asked for my help. I'm here. How cool I, is that? I, 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 this is wonderful. Are you new to leading online or bringing your training, which would typically be in person and moving it to an online platform? Well, if this is new or you are looking to level up the engagement with this online learning experience, whether it's your team members or your participants, this is the video for you. I'm going to be sharing a little bit about what I've been learning or what I've been implementing, what has worked and what I would do differently for leading online and running an online workshop or a training day or experience, whether it's for a half hour, hour, couple hours or a full day. I'm going to share what I've been doing and what I've been learning with you. Hi, my name is Patricia Regeer with Regeer Educational Services. I'm excited to be sharing with you in particular when you're working with a larger group. So that could be even 10 people um, in a meeting, but in particular, when you start getting to a level of 20 people, 30, 40, 50, 60 people, how do you engage with this number of people and make it more interactive and not a boring lecture. Be more than a talking head. I'm going to share some ways that in particular with Zoom meeting. All right, number one, that um, including a waiting room is good for security. It good, it's good for managing the meeting to start and end times or if you have an all day event and you're letting people in again later. Have it, setting up the waiting room is a good security item and a good way to manage the learning experience, meeting or event. All right, number two, give phone numbers ahead of time and have them ready. So if people aren't able to connect with the link on their computer or they're having difficulty hearing or their mic's not working or their camera's not working and they might need to call in, give them the phone numbers ahead of time Advise people that there might be a cost if you're not paying for the level of Zoom um, platform that has the toll-free number. So let people know that there might be a cost for them to call their local number, it might still be long distance. Make sure they have the code password to get in and, um, and have those numbers ready if people have joined and they're realizing they're needing to call in that you can put that in the chat box that you can copy and paste it. That's number two. Number three, um, show everyone how to use their cameras to turn them on and off like this um, and their mic. You couldn't hear me talking so that they could turn on mics on and off, cameras on and off, and let people know ahead of time up front that if you are opening up you're unmuting everyone to have engagement online where you can see everybody, but someone has a dog barking in the background or something distracting is happening, that they can mute themselves, whether it's on their phone, uh, that they know how to do that, or on their computer, uh, and their camera. If there's something happening in the background that shouldn't be on camera, um, you know, people shouldn't be eating while they're, they're watching, then they, you, if they want to do that, they should turn off their camera. And also expectation up front that if you have a co-facilitator or yourself, you're seeing something and they're not figuring it out, that can happen, that you're going to mute them or uh, turn off their camera. That's not being rude. That's in respect to the learning experience for everyone and the recording. Now, number four, have a co-facilitator. Check the chat box for you, especially if you're running the um, presenting, you're sharing your screen, you might not be able to see the chats all the time because you're, you're multitasking. Also to let people in, in from the waiting room if they're coming in late or they're needing to go in and out or their power went out, their computer shut down, you know, that you have somebody else backing you up with some of that so you can focus on the learning um, experience, even if you're multitasking and managing everything. Um, it's good to have someone backing you up. And so that might be the person that hired you to run the workshop. It's okay to have that backup that you're, you're giving um, that um, experience to 
everyone that is participating. So that was number four. Number five, when people are having to call in on their phone and they're on their computer, they are now two people in the, the square boxes. So there is the ability to merge those two boxes. So when you're breaking people up into the breakout rooms um, and you're, you want them to have that experience that they don't go in two different places because that can happen. So there is a way to merge them. It takes a moment, whether you have your co-facilitator, you set them up as co-hosts so they can do that and you show them how, or you just take a moment to do that. Super important that those phone numbers then, that box with their phone number, that they rename their phone number. That you're not looking through five phone numbers, which person is, who do you merge with who, and it's making sure that those people are legitimately should be there. Um, so that's covering actually a couple points um, in that, that number five. So you can merge those videos and phones. Number six, that you rename um, that they can for themselves, that they put a name to that phone number so you know people are supposed to be there and you know who to merge um, as well. Because that's really important. That sixth point is making sure that everyone should be there. If you have an attendance list, your co-facilitators making sure, especially when it's a large group or people are popping in and out, you want people when they're in the breakout rooms to be present and talking. If someone is just there, but they've been divided into a breakout room and they're on another call because they're multitasking, they're not present and it can feel really weird for that small group to have someone there, but they're not talking. Are they supposed to be there? So that's good to know. Those are some highlights uh, so far. And number seven um, is to make sure that you have clear timelines for speakers. If you're facilitating a full day event, that people know when they're starting stopping because online it's even more important uh, to be very clear on timelines. Number eight, uh, to have a backup for the speaker that they know that they can call in with their phones to start letting people in. Um, if they're hosting it, um, maybe their PowerPoint slides on Google Docs or the co-facilitator to also have that PowerPoint as a backup. So those are some suggestions for backups in place if people run into technical difficulties that you're still going on with the show. It was number eight. Number nine, to use the breakout rooms. And just like you would as a facilitator speaker in person, you would be walking around to the different tables, hop into the different rooms, let people know you're gonna do that or that they can message you when they have a problem and that you can hop in, like this example right here. You've asked for my help, I'm here. How cool I, is that? <laughs> I, I, this is wonderful. So definitely do that. Use those tools. Use the chat box. Engage people. All these tips I'm, you, I'm sharing are with the Zoom meeting um, account. Um, and I do pay for the pro account. So these are all accessible, interactive, engaging abilities. Uh, so that was number nine. And number 10 um, just to, uh, to know as well that videos don't necessarily play well in Zoom, uh, unfortunately, but you can still use videos as a tool when you're, you're training or you have them as an example and you want the groups to talk about it. So you can put the link in the chat box. People can copy and paste that link and watch it on another page and then come back to the group and then you can break them out into the breakout rooms. I'll share other videos on how to do some of those things. Those are 10 things to try, do, be prepared for ahead of time. Um, I encourage you to try new things, try icebreakers. If they don't work out, that's okay. Try them again, see what works, what doesn't work. So those are 10 tips. I'll quickly run through them again. Number one, use the waiting room. Number two, give phone numbers and passwords ahead of time. Number three, show everyone how to use their mic and uh, camera settings. Number four, have a co-facilitator, check that checkbox. Number five, merge video and phone numbers. 
Uh, number six, have people rename their phone number box if that is what they're having to use. Seven, clear timelines for your speakers. Number eight, have backups in place for your speakers, like they log in on their phone if their their um, computer's not working. Number nine, use the breakout rooms, chat boxes, use those tools to make it engaging, be more than a talking head, like uh, this video and uh, some other hot tips for leading online meetings. Um, I will share this video as well. Um, so you can check out our other videos and uh, number 10 was the Zoom links to videos and the process for that. Um, you can use the chat box. So please check out all these other videos. They're to help you engage your the variety of learning needs in your audience to lead meetings and online learning experiences. My name is Patricia Regeer with Regeer Educational Services. I welcome you and ask you to subscribe if you haven't done so already. And if you've been checking out our videos and subscribing for a while, thank you so much. That means a lot. We put out videos usually on Tuesdays um, with a uh, connecting blog with all of these written out um, as well in written form and additional handouts and resources you can check out on our website. Thanks so much. Again, my name is Patricia. I hope that you have a light bulb learning moment today and that you're able to reach and engage the variety in your audience.